here today on TaylorMade News, we've got some massive breaking news for you all. And that news is that Newcastle's managerial search is over. Their new manager is the one and only Pep Guardiola. Now, let's go over to TaylorMade Gaming for more on this massive story. Hello, 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 people. Welcome back to the channel. It is me, Taylor Made Gaming, back at you once again with another video. And in today's video, we are going to be looking at Pep Guardiola as Newcastle manager. We have simulated four seasons. Why four? Because it's a random number and I thought it would be something different. So, we have simulated four seasons. Is Pep Guardiola still at Newcastle? Has he won the league with them? Has he done anything with Newcastle? Let me know down below what you think. Pause this video and let me know. Is Pep still at Newcastle? And B, has he won anything with Newcastle? And as well, while you're down there, subscribe to the channel if you're new and pop a mahoosive thumbs up on this video if you do enjoy it. And so, so we get into it. So we have a look at how Newcastle finished in the first season. Oh, ho, ho, okay. Wasn't expecting this. Newcastle, in the first season, have finished 14th with Pep Guardiola as manager. They've only won 11 games. They've drawn a lost 19. That's got to be a record for the amount of games Pep Guardiola has lost in a single season. Wow! They've only got 41 points. So most seasons, that would only just be staying up. But he's got lucky that Watford, Brighton and Wolves were also poor. Wow. Okay. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at the transfers that Pep Guardiola brought in. Here we are on the transfer screen and you can see that Pep Guardiola waited until deadline day to do any kind of business. But he did bring two players in on deadline day. Sergio Regulon, Tottenham's left back, he paid £43.5 million for. And he brought in the Guido Pizarro who is a Argentinian defensive midfielder. He brought him in for £3.2 million. So, a couple interesting bits of business there. Thought he might have gone in and done a bit more, but he waited until January, and then January is when he really went for it. He brought in Jack Stacey, William Carvalho, Matheus Nunes, Jenna Dakenham. Is that how you say his name? For quite a lot of money. Jack Stacey cost 7 million, William Carvalho 59, Nunes 51, and Dakenham 30 million pounds. And then Ian Acho and Otamendi were brought in before the start of season two. So, yeah, that's a disappointing season. Let's see, how did they get on in the cups as well? Well, Carabao Cup, they only made it to the third round before losing to Crystal Palace. Wilfred Zaha getting the goal in that game. And then how about the FA Cup? They only just got past Blackpool, needing a replay to get past Blackpool. They thrashed Fleetwood 5-0 in the fourth round. They got all the way to the quarterfinal, beating Derby in the fifth round but then losing to Chelsea in the quarter-final. And you can see that they never really went on a decent run of form, apart from October. 
other than that, it's all very, very hit and miss. So you can kind of understand why they did finish quite so low. And so, shall we go on to season two? Oh, season two, not a whole lot better. They've again finished mid-table, a little bit higher this time though. Tenth they've finished on 47 points. So only six more points than what they got in the first season. 13 wins, 8 draws, 17 losses and a goal difference of minus 7. It's not gone well, has it? It has not gone well. Let's have a look at their transfers for season two to see who they brought in. Well, I don't like that first deal. As a West Ham fan, I'm not very happy with Jared Bowen leaving us, even if it is for £53 million, a massive amount of money. I think that's the second biggest deal they've done so far in this simulation. So, how did Bowen do for them, just out of interest? Uh, 7.12, 6.9, 7.02. He scored 15, 19 goals in the league. Newcastle fans, would you be happy with that from a £53 million signing? Let me know down below. But, yeah, he's done okay. Who else did they bring in? Nelson Semedo, the very pacey right back from Wolves, who's now at Inter, apparently. Ooh, OK. How did he do for Newcastle? They made a profit on him. They bought him for 20 and they sold him for 33 million. So he's done OK. Not really anything spectacular. So to get a profit on him, they've done all right. Who else have they brought in? Malcolm from Zenit, who can play anywhere along the three behind the striker. And how has he got on? He has done average. Very, very average, you can say there. 6.89, 6.99, And who else have they brought in? Ethan Bristow. He sounds like a darts player. I don't watch darts. But I'm sure there was a darts player with a name like that at some point. Rob Holden from Newcastle. That's a weird one. Adam Webster from Brighton, who is their centre-back, who's now at Brentford. He didn't do very well. 6.74 and a 6.83 before going to Brentford and doing better there. That says something. When you're going to Brentford, oh, actually, that makes sense. I didn't spot that. That's why he did better, because Brentford are in the championship. That makes sense. OK. And so, Lewis Cook and even Ferguson, they brought in. And so, once again, let's have a look how they got on in the Cups. Season 2 in the Carabao Cup, they lost to Sunderland on penalties. Oh, ho, ho, ho. whoops. Oh, I would not want to be a Newcastle fan after that day. Oh, I bet work was a bit interesting. But after that, they of course had the break in December for the World Cup. And then they came back in January. They thrashed Middlesbrough in the FA Cup 4-0, but then lost 3-0 to Southampton with two players sent off within three minutes. Oh, OK. And again, you can kind of see, especially towards the end of the season, their form was atrocious. What's that? Two wins in three, six, nine... 11, 13, 14, 14 games. How oh, wow. That is shocking. Surely Pep didn't survive after that. Let's have a look. No, he wasn't sacked, but he did leave. 
He left his contract. Where did he go to? Pep Guardiola's gone to Portugal. So, has there ever been a Spanish manager in charge of Portugal before? Let me know down below if you know. I don't think there would have been, but like I say, let me know. And also, if you want me to see how Pep gets on in charge of Portugal, again, let me know in the comments and I'll release another video where I'll holiday forward another few seasons to see how he gets on. That's interesting. And so, who did they get to replace Guardiola? Simeone. But Simeone only lasted 157 days. Not even a year. Wow. He lasted, what, five months? He got sacked on Boxing Day. Oh, that's harsh. Happy Christmas to you, Simeone. And then who took over for the rest of the season? Eric Ten Hag. They're getting some really good managers, but they don't seem to be doing that well. Okay. So, uh, phew. so we carry on. I think we carry on just for the next season to see how Simeone's got on for that season. And then that's where we will leave it. If you want to see how Ten Hag and Dean Holden, Dean Holden weirdly getting a job for, for a while, and then Scaloni get on, please do let me know. But Diego Simeone, what transfers did he do in his six months in charge? So, Diego Simeone took over midway through July. They had already bought Mikola Matvienko for £62 million when they didn't have a manager, did they? Or was that before Pep left? Nope, that was in between Pep and Diego Simeone. So I'm not quite sure who made that decision. But how did that play out? Not very well. 6.95 and a 6.97. So, yeah. And then Simeone came in. He bought Ergakan Kakir, who is a Turkish goalkeeper. And he got a 6.83 and a 6.98. And then after that, he also brought in Zielinski, Imeri Samuels, who's not one I've heard of. He's a young English player, apparently, who has played precisely two games for Newcastle. Okay. And then other than that, Jafet Tanganga from Tottenham, Zach Steffen on loan from Manchester City. And then I think it was after, I think Simeone got sacked before Gomez came in, didn't he? Uh, yes, he did. 26th for the 12th. So, yep, so he got sacked before Gomez came in. So these three are not Simeone's transfers. And so let's see. How did Newcastle finish in the third season? And then that's where we'll leave it for today. Wow. You can see. You can see why Simeone got sacked. 38 games. Only 12 wins in the season as a whole. So let's have a look. How many wins did he get before he got the old tin tack? Okay, so he started the Premier League season with a win against Southampton, lost to the mighty West Ham. Who got the goals there? Someone called Johannes Eggestein. The Eggman! The Eggman's come back! It's the Eggman's son. West Ham fans will know who I'm on about. And so he beat Stoke in the Carabao Cup on penalties. He had a very good September, going unbeaten. But then October, it all started going wrong. He had three defeats in the league, only beating Fulham in the Carabao Cup. And in November, he lost two games and drew two. And then December, he beat Villa and Brentford in the league. But then after that, lost to Palace, lost to Everton, got 
spanked by Arsenal and then lost to Man City. And then I'm guessing he got sacked after the Arsenal Carabao Cup quarterfinal defeat. So he only won two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight games in all competitions. You can kind of see why Simeone got sacked. And so, yeah, guys, I think that is where we are going to leave it on that particular bombshell. If you've enjoyed this video, please pop a mahoosive thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel for more Football Manager 22 content. I've got a Chelsea beta save that I'm carrying on for the next week or two until I can start my main save, a level 10 to the Prem, create a club, direct to a football challenge. Going to have to think of a more catchy name than that. But that's what I'm doing this year. Hope you do subscribe and look forward to all of that. And also, if you're doing a Newcastle save, let me know down below how you're getting on. And yep, follow me on Twitter at TaylorMGaming. Thank you so, so much for watching. I shall see you next time. Bye.